Thank you so much, Vindya. Sarvana Namaskar. Uh, we were in fact uh, oversubscribed for this hall and uh, we were afraid whether we will be able to accommodate everyone. Clearly, some of those people who RSVP have fallen victims to Bombay traffic. Uh, so those fears were unfounded. Uh, but thank you all those who have made time to join us. Uh, good morning to everyone who has taken the time to be here with us uh, to discuss the various perspectives on inclusive education. Uh, I strongly believe that any discussion around inclusion uh, must necessarily begin with a recognition of our own uh, or at least my own past in my present. Uh, I stand here welcoming you, uh, having multiple layers of privilege. In case of ability, uh, I am fully able. Uh, in case of gender, uh, I identify as cis male. In case of caste, I belong to the so-called upper caste. Uh, class and religion, I am a Hindu. All identities uh, that intersect are to create an in-group and out-group within society. This naturally impacts critical social aspects like education, which perpetuate the same stratification. But as more and more of us become aware of this, uh, we need to go beyond mere lip service and acknowledgement. I think back to my time studying in Ferguson College in 2005, where I barely interacted with students with disabilities, and wondered how they were able to manage at the same level that I was, or benefit from the courses in the same way that I was benefiting. Uh, then, uh, this was basically showing the limitation of my own exposure and awareness. Then we got one psychology professor who was visually impaired. And from him, uh, I learned a lot about destigmatizing disability. I learned the appropriate way to walk with people. I learned an appropriate way to, and inclusive ways to interact with people with disability. Later, as a student in this Mumbai, I was asked by my visually impaired classmates to read to them so that it will be easier for them to understand the text and complete the assignments. I learned a lot about assistive technology and how they navigated the world of academia and marveled at the way that they were able to complete all their assignments within time while requiring three times the effort to complete them. Slowly, this reading group started including people from rural areas who were not that confident with English and I started peeling away the layers of my own ignorance. I'm moving towards showing up for them and supporting my classmates as much as I could. Could I have done more? Of course. Uh, but I continue to carry all of my unlearnings and conviction with me to this day. So this journey of outgrowing our privilege begins with keen observation, leading to awareness and unlearning, listening, leading to empathy, and acting together, leading to allyship. And today's conference is meant to be a small step in that direction. Since inception, we at LFE have not focused much on these issues in depth. We have been committed to foundational literacy and numeracy and well-being from a systemic lens. But now, we realize that as an organization committed to the broader vision of equity, we can no longer afford to ignore it. As I say this, I acknowledge the hundreds of organizations who have been working in this field and have created the giant shoulders for us to stand on and learn from. Some of whom are here today and some of whom, unfortunately, we were not able to get in touch with. But given our system's approach, we see the problem to be simply too big to be solved for one child or one student at a time. Let me illustrate. So we see here that around 240 million children go to school in India, of which 64% study in government schools. Uh, for those who need it, there is a chart showing percentages of various uh, student groups going to school and a chart showing differential literacy rates uh, between general population and people with disability. 47% of whom are girls, 22% of whom are those belonging to uh, religious minorities and 78% belonging to caste minorities. Uh, across the world, the WHO estimates 15% who uh, are living with some sort of, sort of disability, and 3% in India uh, school-going children with some form of disability or the other. Uh, the disparity is also clear in terms of literacy rate, where based on the global population as well as uh, those with disability. It's quite a significant difference as we can see. 
So it's around 70% for the general population, 50% for those with disabilities, and in Andhra Pradesh, that number is lower at around 40%. 40%. So by 2030, right? So the let, let's again look at the magnitude of the problem. Next slide. Uh, India will have the largest working age population in the world. But as uh, the ASA report tells us, as various research tells us, if 50% of the general students enrolled can't even read and write at a grade 2 level, and in all of this we are not even including people from marginalized sections or people with disabilities, the amount we stand to, use is, uh, stand to lose is huge. The World Bank estimates globally that just by not covering post-pandemic learning losses, the potential wages that can be lost by people in the economy is close to $17 trillion. Now that's tremendous. Uh, and specifically to highlight aspects of inclusion, if we do not include people with disabilities, 3 to 7% of the GDP is something that we stand to lose. If we properly do include women in the organized, structured workforce, those who are doing unpaid labor, we stand to gain 35% of the GDP. Uh, the other surprising statistic, which is not that surprising, come to think of it, is that tribal and indigenous populations across the world make up 6% of global population, but 19% of the extremely poor, but collectively they safeguard 80% of our biodiversity. Now that is the environmental and economic benefits that we just cannot ignore when it comes to inclusion. So given this, what LFE wants to achieve of course, we cannot solve everything and not do it alone. But in the long run, what we do want to do is improve the quality of education imparted to the most marginalized students studying in the government schools, as evidenced by better student learning and well-being. And that's the social impact we want to create. Our theory of change in the short term is twofold. Firstly, we strongly believe in building leaders within the system, whom we call system leaders. This includes training officers from the middle management, administrators, and teacher mentors to design, implement, and monitor educational programs. In the other field, what we also want to do is influence the system processes, where we set up project management units and partner with organizations and also publish research about various issues within the public education systems. Right? So in terms of inclusion, what this looks like and the way we have been thinking is that we will be working for system leaders to create these inclusive education mentors, what uh, Suresh Kumar sir was just referring to. They are called IERPs in Andhra Pradesh, Inclusive Education Resource Persons. There are about 1,300 of them across the state. We will be working on training them. We will also be working on training teachers on the basics of inclusion within the classroom, and these are across 180,000 teachers in Andhra Pradesh. Further, we will be supporting the government in drafting policies and creating that advisory board that Sir was referring to, uh, and also influencing the plans. Like only 15,000 schools have been built, but uh, more 30,000 schools will be restructured and you know uh, supported. So how can we make that infrastructure more inclusive? That is something that we uh, look forward to supporting them with, with the idea that all children with special needs are included in the system, while of course including the, it's not just about access, it's also about improving the quality, right? So that is something uh, that we, uh, hope to achieve. So I'm sure that all of us now agree that the problem is clearly systemic. Society is built and systems are designed in the image of the privileged. But that is precisely why we maintain that the solution also needs to be systemic. Due to the constraints of time, we have been conscious about choosing historically excluded identities of children with disabilities, uh, marginalized genders, and tribal and indigenous communities. All the issues they face are quite well known and written about. And research tells us that it is a society and system that unconsciously create an environment that is disabling. For instance, as a teacher, I felt very unequipped to adequately support those with different learning needs and styles. Scores of teachers with whom I interacted also echo that sentiment. That despite wanting to and despite feeling that it is their duty, they are unable to address their needs. So we really need to look beyond blaming teachers who are not supported and enabled enough by the system. I hope that today we are able to do some justice to the nuance and complexity that surround the intersectional issues and systemic barriers faced by those with excluded identities. We hope that the discussions generate 
awareness, empathy, and conviction for all of us to be allies of inclusion in all the ways that we can. We need to look at unpacking the elements of the systemic environment that need to be changed, nudged, and influenced to create more inclusive processes. It is long overdue that we do this regardless of the current cost or the perceived feasibility. This is the only way we will move closer towards nudging the systems, which may seem too large to move, uh, but can actually move mountains like the way we have seen Suresh Kumar sir present. To invoke the spirit of inclusive education among all of us, I would like to mark today's beginning with a literary creation by Anish Kumar. Chal pakad haath, ab saath saath, school ki sili chadte hain. Tu thi pahiye par, mein do pairon se. Chal, ek dor lagate hain. Chal, tiffin saath mein khayenge. Chal, hurdan khub machayenge. Kabhi padna lekna hoga to, kabhi khel tamashe bhi honge. Eh, dos mere, ab tu bhiya. Tu dekh nahi sakta to kya, mein dunia tujhe dikhaunga. जीवन की अंधेरी पथ पर चलना मैं सीख जाऊंगा तू सुन नहीं सकता तो क्या मैं श्रवण यंत्र बना जाऊंगा हर पल की आपाधापी में आक्षेप सुनना सीख जाऊंगा ऐ दोस्त मेरे अब तू भी आ तू बोल नहीं सकता तो क्या मैं आवाज तेरी बन जाऊंगा बेसुरी शोर भरी इस दुनिया में मीठी बातें कर पाऊंगा जो समझ कुछ भी ना पाए तू तो मैं हर बात तुझे समझाऊंगा चाल बाजों से भरी जगत में इंसान थोड़ा बन जाऊंगा ऐ दोस्त मेरे अब तू भी आ तू गिर कर उठता है हर दिन मैं खड़े खड़े ही गिरता हर दिन जो तेरा साथ मिल जाए तो जीवन भर पथरीली डगर पर गिर कर उठना सीख जाऊंगा तेरी सोच हमारे जैसी नहीं तेरी नजर हमारे जैसी नहीं तेरे काम समझ ना पाता हूं फिर भी बस यही गाता हूं ऐ दोस्त मेरे अब तू भी आ ऐ दोस्त मेरे अब तू भी आ